uh, now we have 70 plus shows a year. Uh, a lot of them are, are community shows, like the Library Music Hour, three times a month, and then the Music by the Track uh, every fourth Saturday of each month at different bar stations. Uh, we have a lot of cultural variety shows, like earlier today we had the uh, Diwali variety show. Uh, we also had multiple uh, Lunar New Year variety show and uh, Moon Festival variety shows. Our tutoring program teaches students uh, 30 plus subjects year round. And then our uh, dance club has a weekly uh, free dance uh, tutoring session over there in Fremont uh, Central Park uh, Pavilion. And so all these projects requires community sign up. Okay, so uh, in the past, uh, these, uh, these sign up are scattered all over the different websites. You need to go to the website, you need to find the form, you gotta fill the form, and then it just takes a lot of time, uh, and then there got to be a good way to do it. And these, uh, this group of students decided they want to make things better uh, using their computer knowledge. Okay, so and then with our green track, which is a monthly meeting, and we pick up trash along the way, uh, they figured out they want to do this project and then uh, to make our community sign up uh, as easy as possible. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, okay, so without further delay, let me hand over uh, this presentation to our team, uh, which includes uh, Max, uh, our team leader, and then uh, Albert, uh, Jonathan, uh, Alex, and Pranav. Uh, Pranav is not a high school student, but uh, he is an excellent programmer. So that's why he uh, also contributed a lot to the team. Uh, so Max, you wanna take over? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm gonna share my screen right now. Yeah, of course, go ahead, Max. Move to our Audacity sign up presentation. Yep. Yep, okay. Okay, um, is, is this sure now? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so hello everyone. My name is Max Wen. I'm the current leader of the Eternity Band IT team. Uh, and today we are uh, all very excited to present the launch of our first product, um, Audacity Signup. All right, so um, this is our team. Um, as I said before, my name is Max. I'm leading the team. Uh, but all, all five of us um, co-founded the app. And it was a huge group of effort. So th there's Jonathan, um, Albert, Pinov, and Alex, who, who are the developers of the app. All right, so why did we make Audacity sign up? So um, to give a little bit of background for this, to sign up for any of our volunteer opportunities, such as uh, Library Music Hour, Music by the Tracks, or other events, um, it used to take a very long time to find the correct event. Uh, and to sign in using an account to register on the form and to get a response. Um, it also caused lots of problems when families were using different browsers. Um, since the form we originally had cannot, could only work on um, a few select browsers. So in that sense, uh, families were very frustrated about the sign-up steps, and we wanted to create an app to streamline this process. Um, solve this issue, we started the development of a mobile app called Audacity Signup. The main goal we wanted to accomplish was to make it easier for families to sign up and reduce the registration time to less than one minute. We also wanted to have a centralized place for families to discover the service opportunities available in the Trinity Band, Audacity Music Club, Audacity Dance Club, and other uh, workshops that we offer here. And in, in addition, we wanted to make it um, easier for organizers to add new events, to change, to uh, remove events. And we also wanted to do this to be a um, not only a short-term solution, but also work in the long-term. Uh, we wanted this to be, be maintainable in the future in um, when we, we decide to hand over the product to our future members of the team. Okay, so this is just a quick reminder. If you've not downloaded the app, uh, can you please scan this, uh, scan the QR code here 
The left one is for iOS. If you have a phone, um, you can scan that or you can search Audacity Sign Up on the App Store. Uh, if you have an Android, you can also um, scan the right QR code or search Audacity Sign Up on Google Play. Um, so I'm gonna leave here for a few seconds if you want to scan this. Um, please download the app. If, uh, if you have any feedback, please let, let us know. We have a form that we will send out um, soon and also leave a rating on the app, on the app store. Okay, I, does anyone still need the, the code? Okay, uh, if there's no one else who wants the code, I'm gonna move on. So I'm gonna do a quick um, uh, demonstration of the app using my own phone. So I'm gonna uh, switch my screen to share my phone. Okay, so stop sharing. I'm gonna go to my phone and share the app with you. Oh, it says um, that I do not have the, the host anymore. Can you give my new account host? I, my bad. Uh, let me take a look. Uh, did you exit? Uh, my, oh, yeah, 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 I see it. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. You got it? Okay. Uh, let's see. I think my phone is sharing right now. All right. So uh, here's the app, Audacity Sign Up. When you first open the app, you can, uh, you'll be presented with a sign-in forms. So I'm uh, to, to sign into an account. So I'm just gonna sign them to one of my accounts right here. Um, so just quickly sign in and there we go. You're logged into the app. Here's the home screen. Um, you can find many of these opportunities here. So if you scroll, you can see the various events we have. Um, I'm just gonna go to one of them. So let's say I wanted to sign up for um, Library Music Hour for Fremont Main Library. So I will go here. You can see the dates, the location, uh, the description, if you have, want to get an idea of what the event is. Um, and you can press sign up. You can fill in all the information here. I'm not gonna sign in because otherwise I, I would be um, signing in with my account here. But if you fill in all this information, then press submit, then you are signed up for the event. It's just as easy as that. Um, it used to be a very long time to just fill in the form, uh, but this app has really made it uh, streamline this process. Um, you can also go to other opportunities here, such as uh, if you want to request a concert, if you're a business or a, a corporation, you want to request one of our concerts, you can go here. Uh, you can also sign up for Audacity Staffs Club. And if you have any feedback, again, you can send it to our email or uh, you can fill in um, a form that we have, another feedback form. And uh, there's also a few of our websites here in case you ever want to uh, check out our, our events or photos, images on our other websites. All right, I think that's going to be it for this demonstration. I'm going to stop sharing. All right, I'm gonna to move to the next section. Okay, so I'm gonna hand this over to, oh wait, yes, um, I, I'm gonna be doing the next step too. So let's talk about the design choices that we chose. Um, so at first we decided to make a document of to outline the various um their schedule and the software that we we plan to use so, so if you go here here's the document we drafted this document um in early um may and april uh where we just give a brief overview of our schedule like our plans for uh, each week and we also listed our requirements made sure that our design um fit all the goals and requirements. And uh, in addition to this, um, we also uh, we also outlined this on a website called Figma. So here is the design right here. 
uh, as you can see, we made the initial um, design of um, just a trying to see the functionality of how everything worked. Um, here's our initial design. So we had like all of our screen navigation la laid out and our uh, functionality, how everything would work. And then later on, we decided to um, make this look a little bit better. So if you go here, here's a, one of our earlier designs. Um, it, this looks uh, very similar to what we have right here. And uh, we also added some few notes. So if you click on um, performance type, it will automatically adjust the length of the performance and the to time limit. Um, and we also added options here to make sure that um, the consent option was only visible if uh, the user uh, was under 18 years old. OK, so let's talk about um, why we decided to choose our um, our, our particular software that we we used. So um, there are many different frameworks we could have used for uh, to design the mobile app. Um, the main problem we faced was that it was very hard to um, write an app for both iOS and Android platforms. Um, so the first option we had uh, is a ba very basic option. We could have used a language called Swift and uh, in addition to Kotlin. And this would mean if we use this option, we would have have to write the app twice in order to make it work on iOS and Android, uh, which was which would be very challenging to coordinate and very time consuming. Uh, we, so instead, we wanted to um, adopt a paradigm known as write once, run everywhere. Um, on the left, we have Flutter. This is using the Dart programming language. And the right, this is one we ultimately chose, is the React Native framework. Um, uses JavaScript and uh, very similar to HTML and CSS. The reason why we chose this one was that um, most of us did not really know the Dart uh, language. Um, and uh, we all had um, some previous experience in programming, like um, using HTML and CSS and uh, similar languages, um, especially JavaScript. So we ultimately chose to choose that option. Um, so again, I'm going to highlight the there's a flowchart design that we decided to use. Um, each screen can show which um, which sub subsequent screen um, the user can go to from each place. That way, we were able to coordinate the um, our development by making sure that everyone knew which screen um, would point to the to the other one. We also um, made sure to have a, a palette, a consistent palette. So if you can see the upper um, left corner, we we originally wanted to use a red and blue design. Um, that was, um, it did not really look too well because it was mostly just white on the background. So we shifted to a more um, using green and uh, other uh, colors and styles. Okay, um, I'm going to hand this over to uh, Jonathan. All right, so moving on to the workflow. Uh, Max, next slide. Oh, I, um, uh, I don't think I can hear you. Hello. Hello. Oh, yes, I can. Yeah, I can hear you, Jonathan. Okay. All right. Uh, Max, can you hear me? No. Okay. Is this is it not working? Here. Uh, I'll message you. Uh, check the Zoom chat. Never mind. Okay, it, it is working. <laughs> my, my my laptop was just glitching. So, um, yeah, I'll give this to Jonathan. All right. So our workflow was sent around a task board on Trello, and we had multiple uh columns where we would organize these tasks based on priority. So high, medium, to low, and then once they were finished, we would move them on to done. And then for each task, uh, there was tags that would help us categorize them. Tasks uh were assigned or sign up for after weekly meetings and progress reports are made in a weekly fashion. So then of the week, we would all update the progress on our task, whether or not we needed uh, more time to work on it or we were already finished. And yeah, next slide. Okay, so moving on to version control. So each member works on a separate branch and commits to their own branch. And once we complete uh, our task, the changes are then pushed into the main branch and the separation of branches helps make the code 
separated and easier to identify on GitHub so we can see each change. And next slide. So onto peer review. So before each new edition is fully merged, the changes get vetted by a reviewer to ensure that there were no like formatting issues or bugs within the new code. And reviewers would go through the code and test to make sure like the vet vetting of the code happens. And so in the screenshot here, you can see how uh, we have GitHub itself checking for the style and things. And then sometimes we would uh, ask for Max to help uh, rec uh, review the code. And if he finds anything, he would request change it and things like that. Okay. And now Pranav. Okay, so now we're going to go over to, um, uh, Max, you can, you can continue, continue sharing screen. I'll be um, sharing my screen afterwards. Uh, okay, I, I will um, reshare the screen then. So, okay. Okay, now we're going to be going over the implementation and some technical details of the app. Next slide. Okay, so now first we're going to talk about the, about the user interface UI also. Um, so there are basically um, multiple components which are put together to make a single screen. And now these uh, these components are very small. Um, they are used for multiple screens or can just be like simply put one put into one in the future. And now, for example, one of them to the right, which is the time this time slot list component um, in the uh, request concert screen. Um, it's going to like multiple like, sections, kind of. So you can see that um, after you press add time slot, then you get this pop up window where you can change the um, the start date, hour, minute, and AM, PM. Then after you press confirm, you can go to the end time, and then you can change the start and end time by just pressing the underlying text. And you can also delete um, delete time slot if it was like a misclick or something. Um, next slide. Okay, now we're going to talk about like how what happens when you submit a form. So first, you fill in the data. So this is the uh, library music hour form. Um, and now, like as like what Max um, said earlier in the presentation, um, there is some dynamic typing involved. For example, where when you change the performance type, the time also changes. Um, and now after you press submit, then all the data gets validated. Um, and it's this is question specific. For example, um, for if your if your performance is like too long. Like in on the right where you see that you put 20 minutes when it's actually the time limit is only 15. You get an error that pops up saying that like something's um something's wrong with your with the data you input. Um and you can press this OK and then change your um data and then just continue going on until it's actually um all the data is good and then you get a confirm a confirmation screen. Uh, next slide. Okay, so now this code snippet you see on the on the upper left. Um, it sends a post request, a request to Google Forms, and then it submits that to um, to the lab, to the, um, the API. And then after that, the request looks like this. So you have like entry dot some number, and then what's actually being like sent. Um, and you see like these like for like a bunch of all the um, all the questions in the form. And then after that, it gets sent to the spreadsheet, which has all the input, and then you get a um, form submit successfully. Confirmation screen. Okay, now I'm going to be sharing my screen to just talk about how like the spreadsheet works when you get all the volunteer opportunities that you see on the upper part of the, of the upper part of the home screen. Okay, um, one second. Okay, so now um, the spreadsheet looks like this. So you have the title, the location, uh, when the the concert is going to be. And then the image, then the description, and then some tags. Now there's no like limit for that, what the tags can be. For example, you see for Audacity Academy, there's like math, science, history, and then for um, the library, the library music concert, you have, um, music hour, you see some electrical piano, presentation equipment, indoors, outdoors, free book, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and now when you open the app, you don't see all these stuff in this exact order. It's actually sorted by time. So. You see it's, it's shuffled right now, but in the app, it's going to be shorter by time. So you're going to see one of them that said like 1026 and then 119, um, 1116, 1123, and then, some, and then some more in that order like that. And you only see ones that are in the future. You won't see anything in the past. For example, 1026 is um, before now. It's 
um, in the past, so you won't see that. And now this is the one that, that Max showed earlier um, on December 14th. Um, and, that, and then you'll see that on the app, so yeah. Okay, Max, you can continue on and transfer it to the next person. Okay, uh, let's hand it over to Albert. Oh, okay. I'll be presenting challenges. Uh, could you go to the next one? So there's like a bunch of versions of versions of uh versions of iPhone and Android, and if you look at the first image, there's like there's like a let me see, like 10 models, a lot. And if you look on the left, for Android, there's like a lot of, lot of models. And there's like a lot of uh, Android companies as well. And each of them creates like a lot of different, uh, different, and different phones. For example, Xiaomi, Android, and Huawei, and Samsung, they are four different brands who create like lots, lots of different phones. So we have to make it apply for all of them and make it work. And then, and then coordinating is also an issue because not everyone can be available at a certain time. Like what if someone had a dentist appointment or they're busy? So we have to discuss with everyone and make sure, make sure, oh, we can we can do a meeting at this certain time. Oh, go to the next one. And also we also have to deal with a lot of legal issues. So when we have to publish the app, we have to go for a lot of the app app privacy and know how much data we're gonna collect for each user. And if you look at the image to your right, you'll see how much see our uh, private, pol private policies. And another issue is that uh, each team member has different skill sets. Like, like if someone can be like really, really good at coding and then someone can be really, really bad at coding and someone can be really good at a certain thing. So we also need to keep that in mind. And also we have to make sure the simulator, like I mentioned earlier, there's different, there's much like there's like Android and iPhone iOS and we have to make sure it works on there. Um, I'll be doing this oh. yeah. um, so looking forward to the next two or three months, our main priority is to gather as much user feedback as possible. So I strongly encourage all parents and band members to try our app and share your honest thoughts. And uh, we hope you continue to enjoy using our sign up app. And we welcome any consecutive, uh, uh, constructive feedback, and it motivates us to keep improving. Next slide, please. Uh, so that said, uh, in the future, we're planning on adding some uh, new features. First is push notifications. This is important to keep uh, any users informed of new events and announcements. And we could uh, implement this through some uh, method similar to uh, the Firebase cloud messaging system. And similarly, we can also add a reminder feature to notify users of any event registration up to, uh, deadlines uh, or any events that they signed for. Uh, in addition, we also plan on adding multi-language support um, like Chinese and Spanish using something similar to React Native INTN or um, internet internalization. And lastly, we plan on uh, further UI enhancements uh, based on the user feedback from uh, our version right now. Uh, next slide. And uh, lastly, we're actively recruiting new members to join our IT team uh, with Max, Albert, and Jonathan graduating next summer. We're eager to continue building on their efforts. So if you're interested in joining us or you know any uh, family members or uh, friends who are interested, please check out the Google form by scanning the QR code uh, to learn more and get involved. Uh, we're looking for an, uh, any middle school, high school team members who are passionate about computer science, and um, any, we welcome any experience level. And by joining our team, you're directly impacting your Bay Area community through our app, and you can uh, learn to experience uh, working in a team-based project. Uh, I'll move it on to the Q&A session. Okay, uh, we're, we're gonna um, shift gears and um, I'm gonna pass this over um, to talk uh, for uh, the college application process to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, uh, so anybody had any question about the development process? Uh, uh, please think about it while I start presenting uh, some of the uh, idea that we came through in this project in regarding to college application. Um, let me try to share again. Where is sharing? Here it is. But I have to say one thing before I go is that we have so many activities. Okay, so we have something on the band website, we have band recruitment, we have performer recruitment, we have media team, IT team recruitment, we have requests for uh, uh, request for concert and where people can hire, I mean, hire our band, I mean, not really hire a band, but, you know, ask us to go do a concert, or you can hire us as well. Um, and we send our players to perform in, in theaters and they earn money. Uh, with variety, cultural variety shows, dance club, library shows, bar shows, tutoring, or everything. Now all can be done in one place. Now to me, that is amazing because uh, you know uh, it used to take a long time to load a very slow website. Because if you go to, if you are one of our performers, you would know to load our library music our uh, website. It probably takes several minutes because all the all the three years of picture and the videos on it. Okay, so the website is really really slow. And if you can bear with that, and you, you manage to get to navigate to the to the Google form, and then if you're on an iPhone, the Google form will now open and somehow you're now logged in. If you're on WeChat and on iPhone, that's even worse. So uh, now that you have everything in one app, I think it's a total game changer for our organization, which streamlined the whole process put all these events, all these sign up in one single app and get it done within a minute. Okay, so it greatly enhanced um, our ability to uh, influence uh, our community and then make uh, help uh, everybody to join our program. They can now they can do it easily. Uh, so uh, I want I want to go on to this topic. Why people need to volunteer, right? Uh, the, uh, there's a bunch of things I want to say, but here's the one thing. Okay, so connect to the society, which is easy. Okay, so uh, for our co uh, high school students, uh, they can find a platform where they can use their skills and then make actual products that actually, that actually uh, do things for people. Okay, that's connected to the society. Self-reflection. Self-reflection is when I say, when I was a teenager, when I look back, I feel like I am somebody that have never seen my own face in the mirror. Okay, now, uh, when you interact with society, you can see your reflection from people's reaction. Okay, and that, that would influence your decision uh, in, later on in your life. And then, how this affect your college app? Uh, there are four things I want to say, okay? The college, they're looking for a few things. One, can the student graduate? Okay, if, if a college invests all the resource on you, they would expect you to graduate. Now, a lot of people change their mind really often, couldn't perform under pressure. Uh, now, if, you can demonstrate that you can do something, honor that commitment, follow through your promise without external pressure. Means what? It's not something your teacher tells you to do, your mom tells you to do. Uh, there is not a timeline for you to strictly follow. For example, if you don't come up, show up in the test, then you'll fail the test. It's not that kind of thing. It's, it's like that you do on your own. There's nobody watch over your shoulder and you still can carry things through over a long course of period of time. Then you prove that if I admit you into this college, you're gonna graduate, okay? 
And then number two, can the student apply skills? A lot of people read books, uh, passing tests, but once they go get on a job, they don't know how to use their, the stuff they learn and bridge it towards the, uh, the, the, the demand of reality. And that kind of student cannot succeed in their job, in their career. Okay, so college do not want that kind of people. They want people that can show early on that they can take whatever they learn and turn to something useful. Okay, and then number three, is this student a team player? So if you are developing a career, you are either leading or you are following, okay? And, and there are uh, uh, many kind of people, such as myself. Uh, when I was younger, I was not a team player. Uh, I'm not a very good leader. Uh, uh, you know, I think really high of myself. Uh, and then I'm not... I, you know, I don't want to follow other, others because I'm a, I have a, my ego is too huge. Okay, so they don't want that kind of people. They want people that can be a good leader and be a good follower in a team setting. That way, you're, you'll be successful in your career. And lastly, most prestigious college, they're looking for future leaders. They're looking for somebody that can be a president. Somebody can be a CEO. Okay, they don't really care that the 400K they are pay, you are paying them they really, they really care about that. One day you're going to give them $40 billion in endowments. Uh, they, they, you're going to be uh, their, their keynote speakers uh, as a U.S. senator, uh, something like that. Okay? So they're looking for people with creativity. They're looking for people that can demonstrate that they think they can think out of the box. They can gather the resources they need and build something uh, and lead a group of people and to achieve a, 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 a pretty lofty goal, okay? So if you can check all the boxes, then you are a good college uh, candidate. Now, to me, this team demonstrated all these four factors, okay? They, they did this project without actual help. Now, because uh, I personally, I am a musician. I do not know how uh, 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 anything about coding. And they, they actually did the whole thing all by themselves. So they demonstrate uh, capability to endure a task, to carry through a promise and get things done. Now, also they apply their skills and if they, they lack skills, they look up, they search up, they learn and they, you know, gather whatever they need to get things necessary. They demonstrate the ability to apply skills. And then they, of course, they, uh, did this as a team. And uh, here I want to say something about Max here, okay, um, for leading the team. And if if uh, Alex and Pranav, you want to take over next year, you need to learn from Max. Okay, he's the one that stand up. Then when when the, the you know, the tough situation comes, uh, everybody's busy and nobody's working and he's the one that stand up. I'm the team leader. Okay, I, I, I this is on me. Okay, so he stood up and then, uh, uh, you know, get things through. So good for you, Max. Uh, okay, so that, for me, the team checked all four boxes. Okay, they demonstrate their commitment. They dem demonstrate their capability to apply skills. They demonstrate the ability to work as a team. And they demonstrate their leadership uh, when... Yeah, things are tough. Okay, um, there, there. I know there's a point of time that, uh, uh, you know, you are kind of in. Uh, there's a lot of difficulties, and there is no end in sight. You don't see whether this can be done or not, or but you still, um, you know, carry on and got it done. And congratulations. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, this is Max, our volunteer of the year. Congratulations, uh, 400 hours in, in a junior year. That is not easy, okay? That is not easy. And then, okay. oh, okay. So some pictures from our award ceremony. You guys deserve it, okay? Um, and some links from all kinds of organizations that we have. And that's it from me. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me or the team.